Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Sensionic stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Sensionic Holdings is a medical technology company focused on the development and commercialization of the first and only long-term implantable continuous glucose monitoring system. It's called Eversense. Eversense is designed to help people with diabetes and confidently live their lives with ease. Eversense includes a small sensor inserted completely under the skin that communicates with a smart transmitter worn over the sensor. The glucose data is automatically sent every five minutes to a mobile app on the user's smartphone. Currently, people are ordering this product and insurance companies are paying $10 per day. But this is a multi-billion dollar market. If the product is successful, the company will be worth a lot of money. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.7 billion market cap. They're trading at 460 a share and they have 372 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses and they also have negative net income every year. Revenue is a sales for the company and it's pretty low. They did peak in 2019 at 21 million. It's 10 million in a trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Example is cost of labor. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit and they have negative gross profit every year. Below that is operating expenses. Examples are research and development. Then below that is operating income. And they of course have negative operating income every year. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Then other income and expenses, which are usually impairments or other non-operational gains and losses. Then on the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, and that's negative every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And this company has negative free cash flow every year. So they need money from somewhere to run their business. So they issue stock. They issued 67 million in 2017, 149 million in 2018, and 29 million in 2019. When a company issues stock, it increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. They also issued debt. They issued 50 million in 2018 and 127 million in 2019. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If you cannot generate positive operating cash flow at some point, you do not have much of a business because you cannot rely on debt and equity financing to run your business in the long term. They just recently received FDA approval, so they don't have much sales. So of course they have negative operating cash flow each year. And you could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. To calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income. Then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. They had $11 million of write-offs. That's a non-cash item that brought down their net income. So we have to add it back here. They had $7.2 million in stock-based compensation, negative $2 million in changes in working capital. So even though they reported a $99 million loss, they actually lost 94 million of cash flow. Let's look at the capital structure. Negative $55 million of equity. 
That means their liabilities on their balance sheet are $55 million more than their assets, and they have 60 million of debt. So they're 100% debt, 0% equity, and they have 34 million net debt. Net debt is debt minus cash on the balance sheet, and their WAC is six and a quarter percent, and that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 3.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2.4 billion. We divide that by 372 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 653. They're trading at 460, so they're trading at a 30% discount. It's a buy according to the model. This is assuming the company has positive free cash flow after 2024. They could have it earlier. They could never have positive free cash flow. That's a risk you take when investing in a company. This is the stock price the last five years. So you can see it was pretty flat for a while. Then it dropped a lot. There's been lots of news about this company the past few weeks. So the stock has really been driven up. And they have a really low beta, 0.42, so the stock moves half the market. The stock has gone up over 200% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 17%. The 52-week low was 35 cents, the high was 556. And the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is a really liquid stock. 40 to 60 million shares are traded each day. And of the 372 million shares outstanding, about half are on float. 24% are held by institutions and 17% of the shares on float are shorted. So the reason the stock price may have gone up a lot recently is due to a short squeeze. The ideal candidate for a short squeeze is a low float, high shorted stock, which this is. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd in 2015, you'd be at $14,000 today. These are the top five shareholders. None of them are common names that I'm used to seeing. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE is nine, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. When a company has negative PE, you look to the price to sales ratio. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 170. So investors are paying $170 for $1 revenue. That's a really bad price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They have negative equity. So they have negative price to book. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT. So they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income and negative equity, so we can't look at the ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities three and a half times. They have current assets of 26 million of cash, 4 million of receivables, and 4 million of prepaid assets. So it does look like the company's undercapitalized. Unless they generate positive free cash flow, they're going to need more debt or equity financing to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of two other companies in the same industry as Sensionix. And if Sensionix has number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're worse than average in every category. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 30% discount but it's really difficult to value a company that doesn't have much revenue and that only reports negative free cash flow. Anything can happen with this company. It could be a big hit or it could be a bust. Only time will tell. I rank their free cash flows one out of 10 because they're always negative. I rank their revenue one out of 10 because it's really low. And I rank their ratios one out of 10 because they're all pretty weak. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.